নমস্কার নমস্কার ইএস লাইভ এবং আমার এই স্পেশাল শো ডাগ আউট প্রতি শনিবার সন্ধ্যে সাড়ে ছটায় আমি চলে আসি আপনাদের সামনে নতুন কোন এক ব্যক্তিত্বকে নিয়ে ক্রীড়া ব্যক্তিত্ব এবং আজকে আপনাদের স্ক্রিনে আপনারা দেখতেই পাচ্ছেন অ্যাপসলিউট লেজেন এবং কলকাতার মানুষ যাকে সবুজ তোতা হিসেবে পরিচিত সেই হোজে রেমেস বেরেটো ওয়েলকাম how are you and uh, thank you so much for giving us uh, time i know you are very busy you are still working so thank you so much and uh, i really appreciate that you have given us uh, your precious time thank you deb uh, it's really a pleasure to to be with you uh to be meet you after a long time and I think it's uh yeah I I think you're really also lucky because it's my first live live program. All right. I have never had oh, a wow. single live program so far. And I, this one is just my first one. Oh wow. Um the thing is that see listen we just uh, want to know a little bit more about you because we have seen you play and we have obviously admired your talent and your contribution to football. Indian football, Kolkata club football, Tumon Bagan. So just, just wanted to know a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your country, the way you grew up. It's just a very, very casual discussion. And uh, yeah. I want the viewers to know a little more of you. So, so if I can ask you a very basic question that, um, see, you live in a country which is the other side of the world, if you, if, you, if you are talking about Calcutta and India. Not many uh, Indians have visited your country. we actually get to see brazil when you play football in the world cup platform obviously there are major uh, the brazil and argentina fans in kolkata but if you could share a little bit about your country your uh, culture your football culture the way you grew up and you started playing football because we hardly know about uh, brazil that much um i think uh, when people uh, think 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 about brazil i think uh, one of the first thinking of course is about football and 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 of course i was one of those boys who also um, i think uh, street football is very popular i think around of the world i think a lot of methodologies today in the world even dutch and um, football and also different cultures in the world they are really uh, still following that street football uh, yes. they apply the street football in their methodology so i think i was one who also that uh, had been into those streets is also playing soccer you know uh, very food you know with different uh, age, age like different uh, 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 boys with different ages you know um, yeah. just a boy that would stand out you know between the the olders and bigger guys and say yeah I, i can play over here and just a guy that you know try to prove that yeah i, I can play with you guys no matter what the age you are and how big you are i'm, I'm good enough to be here so <laughs> i'm the I, one of those boys that come out out from street football in brazil um i think living i think uh, uh during my day i think i spend a lot of time in into streets playing with with friends uh, uh enjoying the childhood in different ways and really a very very free childhood you know and um, during my days and that's it and i don't know what more i can say um um i think uh, uh a boy from uh, a small town in brazil um uh, uh, uh i think um what more i can say about uh, what what you are curious about to know about me because there's my story is a huge there's a lot of things where i could share and yes uh and see every time i've seen you i've met you in kolkata or anywhere else uh, honestly i felt that you have a great heart uh, you have spoken so much about uh, you know how difficult it was for you 
to grow up and to take football as a profession because you played in various clubs like Grêmio, Penang FA. Then obviously with Mohan Bagan, we all know, and then Mahindra, even Bhawanipur. But how did you actually uh, start playing football professionally? When did you realize that I can actually play football and take up uh, you know this sport as as a profession? When did you realize that, and when when it all happened? See, it's you know coming out from you know being born into a small town in Brazil, where it's five hours from the capital. You know, although we had two professional clubs in my town, but um, but for us, even like uh, uh, although having two small clubs in 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 our town, uh, is is not something that we thought about. Like, it's not something that you dream of. You know. Uh, of course, we all, as a small kids, were all dreaming to to be part of a big clubs. I think, as the kids are dreaming today, they want to be. Although there's a club in India, they're still thinking about Liverpool, Manchester, and something that way. And for me, of course, a, a dream for me was like uh, to move it to, to to go to the capital, you know, and maybe to play for a Grêmio uh, one day. But it's still, it's a very far. You know, from a small town, very far, very, very far from the capital. It's really a very far thing, and and really difficult. It's something that you know you don't thinking about. You know, I, I never, I think, thought about you know to to become a. Of course, I had a few of my relatives that become a professional. They are they are professional players. I had an uncle and and a cousin of mine. Both of them they are pro, they are professionals. Yeah, and of course I had, you know, that reference. Say, yeah, my uncle was a professional player, and my cousin was. But it's not something that you know uh, I could, you know, imagine myself. Say, yeah, I'm going to be a professional player. But I think my surroundings, I think uh, the environment where I born, where I grow, it's helped me a lot on that. Because as, as I said, I you know I could be in the streets anytime. I could be into the ground anytime. I had friends, you know, where you know they always ready to play football. You know, uh, during like during the week, I had I could play in streets. I could go to the ground, and always people were there to play. And we had the teams where you used to you know to live in like our area. In the weekends, on Saturdays or Sundays, so always I like my friends are there, and I like we just a kind of push each other because we are. Sh- I think we are all sharing the same love for the sport, for the game, and 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 so we just like you know kind of support each other in that in, in that uh, you know love for that sport. So I never thought about, uh, frankly speaking, to to become a professional player. It's it's something that happened for me, you know, uh, something that happened when I was 15. Uh, I started really being a little bit more playing amateur leagues on on Saturdays, Sundays. That is a very strong league in in Brazil, uh, in amateur league. I started play play when I was 15. And somehow over there, it was a place where I got scouted. You know, I got okay. scouted over there, uh, playing those Saturdays, Sundays. And, and it was I got scouted. And where I had moved it, to the club of my town, you know, to play uh, like a youth uh, league. And mm-hmm. then, yeah, from, from, that was the first step from the youth league. Then as I... Showing that I was able to stand, even in in they starting slowly uh, using me into the pro team, the professional team of my the club of my town, and okay. yeah, I then I just starting uh, like uh, you know it's a kind of the same thing what I usually to do in the streets. I like to try to stand out to prove it myself. So the second test for me starting happen again. Then I had my second test in that club. You know that say uh, you are just 15 to 16, and and all the other players they all professionals. So it was a, like a second test for me where I had to prove it myself, and 
where, where I had to prove myself that I was strong enough, you know, to be part of that, you know, professional team or, or we can say adult team. So in that way, I like I always, uh, I, I think I had, uh, I was motivated enough, you know, to, to stand for that half year over there. And where it's opened out for me as I have done quite well in that half year. In the, in the second year, and um, of course, that half year opened out for me to be staying the second year over there. Uh, okay. where, where the things really started to change for me. Because uh, we got a coach from the capital. And it was a good coach. And where he's really starting to help me out, he's starting supporting me, believe on me. Where I like starting really developing myself, starting getting more understanding about the game and you know whatever is is really starting feeling more part of it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And then in my 16, uh, it was when I moved into Grêmio. Yeah, when yes. I was 16, uh, I started playing the that division. Uh, for that club, a 16 years old boy playing uh, like in that division, a professional division. So of course, uh, it was uh, in in just half a year, uh, and of course, Grêmio. I think they heard about that, and and someone scouted me in that club also from Grêmio. And is where I like just few a uh, few weeks. Uh, after that league got stopped, I got a call from Grêmio when uh, Grêmio had taken me to to the to the capital. All right. Um, so that's a very interesting uh, story, and you you were brave enough to take that chance and prove yourself uh, as a professional footballer. But um, see, we also play football passionately in, in Bengal, in Calcutta. You you know that. Nobody knows better than you. Um, but I'm sure uh, that you must have realized that there, there are uh, differences in setup in the grassroots level, obviously in Brazil, uh, which is a World Cup winning you know nation. Uh, and uh, India is still trying very hard to improve the standards. So what are the differences you find that Brazil have the facility wise in the grassroots level or the setup wise which india is probably still not there what are the differences you feel to be honest i don't know i think the same is, is struggles the, the same struggle in that i think uh, yes. in india i think the india have uh, i think we 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 sharing the same struggles you know it's it's uh, football also uh, Football in Brazil is not a heaven, you know, um, especially for, for grassroots and youth level. It's really very, it's very hard, you know, it's really very difficult. I think things what I had passing through, I don't think that changed that much. Maybe for the, for the clubs in the capital, of course, it's still they're having that infrastructure, they're having that money. Uh, but I think for the clubs is still in, in, in place, like small towns in Brazil, it's, it's still quite difficult. You know, it's quite challenging for, 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 for grassroots and youth players. And I really don't know, but what I feel is that uh, what I had sharing about my, my childhood and during that time, I think the environment, you know, the environment yeah, is yeah. the environment that is, is amazing. Like, you know, uh, I could play in the streets, I could play anywhere, and, and always I had friends to do it. You know, always mm -hmm. friends, they, they are ready to play football. And, okay, and in the weekends, what, uh, apart from those, those, those trainings, those street footballs or playing to the ground, we still had opponents in the weekend to where I usually we used to go, leaving our area to play football over there. So, anywhere I like you go, in Brazil, is about football, you know. Yes, when absolutely. You know, when you meet, is about football. Like in your house, it's people are sharing about football. So there is football anywhere, like around you. You know, surrounding you, there's always, always football is there. So when you're going to watch in uh, 
uh, there is one TV in the room in your house, so your parents are going to watch in football, you know. And if you say I want to watch football, then yeah, everyone will sit down and watch football. So I think in India is a little bit different, you know, than than yeah. Brazil, and because I think there's a lot of passion for cricket, and yeah. there's a lot of passion for movies, you know, and whatever movies, novels, and different things. Uh, but in Brazil, is like we are living football. We are yes. it's in the air. Football is over there. Uh, it's not because yes. of uh, the, the the people. Sometimes they say, "Yeah, but um, India, we do, we don't have any things." Yeah, in Brazil also we don't have it. We also we don't have any sometimes proper grounds. You know, we don't have any the facilities. We don't have any sometimes proper trainers into especially in these small towns and um, yeah, we don't have any the facilities. We don't have any the support. Yeah, but what we have is. We having, you know, we having the most important thing that is the passion, you know, is yes. the love for that we sharing to one another, and it's all is all about what we we talk. Everyone is talking about about football, and um, yeah, I think that is the difference. I think, uh, to be honest, you know, that is exactly where I was also thinking that you know. India is still a developing country. The economy is not great. Brazil is still a developing country in that way. Uh, but where is the difference? The, the people they look alike. Not much of difference physically. Um, if wherever I saw you, you, I mean, we look we look alike physically. It's not like the Europeans who are a lot bigger and stronger, uh, or the Africans are stronger, bigger and. But for for us, like the Brazilians and for the Indians, we all look alike. But still. There was something missing in us, which I felt that which was, you know, different from the from from the people who play football in Brazil, because we, you have produced Roberto Carlos's and uh, Kaka and Ronaldo's and you know Pele, so they're absolute legends. But so I was trying to find out that exactly where you know it, it, uh, the difference there, it, between India and Brazil. In there, but it's you see. It's it's all about competition, you know. Yes, I think when you look into cricket in India, why you are able to produce in top cricketers because the competition is that high, you know. That is, it's yes. like a ranger kid is making really the kid to think a lot about it, you know, about decisions yes. making. So the compet when the competition there, it's helping a lot to you, you know, to develop yourself, you know, even without yes. the coach. Even without a coach, because see, sometimes as I say, I grew up, I didn't have a coach, but I watch a lot of football, you know, and I watch a lot of football, and I haven't actually uh, played a lot of, you know, football, you know, and, yes. and that competition, the competition also is there. Competition, I think, at, at the grassroots level. The competition is that much, is that big. You can imagine, you know. And yes. I think what we are facing cricket over here, and and I feel yeah. in football in India, you don't have in that challenge. You know the, the, that competition is only uh, maybe within few states, maybe two or three states are there. With that competition is there, I feel Kolkata is yeah. one of the most challenging places for grassroots and also I think the competitions are there. You know, you having guys where you're looking for say, wow, that guy is really good, that kid. So I have to be better than him. You know, if he really, like, yeah, I won't be, I won't be the best player of this competition because, but wow, it would be really difficult because there's two or three guys in this competition that they're really good. So in that way, that competition there, or maybe you're not good in that competition, but you say, yeah, but next week, I'll be better. You know. So in that way, you are keeping challenge yourself, and it's yes. what we unfortunately we are not having over here. Is that competition from grassroots level? That is, I think, is yes. the most important thing. So, 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 uh, see, what I realized from whatever you said is that um, mm. it's just a legacy that the Brazil follows regarding football, and uh, and I think that passion which you have 
in Brazil for football, it is diverted in India. You know, some people want to play tennis, some people want to play cricket. Most of them want to play cricket, and it used to be football before. Before, you know, in 1970s and 1980s, and you have seen when you have come in 1990s that the passion for the derby, the passion for East Bengal and Mohun Bagan was massive. But I think in Brazil, what I also figure out is that not many boys want to play football in numbers, in sheer numbers. They play football, which is kind of missing in India. So. most of the boys the numbers they want to play cricket so i think there there is something which which we need to think about because uh, to to play football in that level you need to have absolute passion and obviously you need lot and lot of players uh, to play football and you can pick the best among them so i think uh, which which i can figure out from whatever you say that's a great great way of explaining things um but another thing which which i really wanted uh, Uh, to ask you is that see, I have spent a lot of time in England and also in other countries where football is big. And when I ever used to cross a football club, um, I used to see the kids playing, and I always used to feel that that twelve, thirteen year old kids, they have a fantastic standard. So the basic level, the bottom at the basic, at the, I feel the standard is very high at the grassroots, at the basic level. There, the standard is very high. and i feel that you know that is where is probably a huge difference from india and other part of the world which plays the football in the world cup level do you think do you feel the same way which i felt i think for countries like brazil england and and many many also countries are around of the world i think it's football is culture you know um, yes football is culture over there and yes And, and and see before i born my first year cake was a a, a cake with a football a kind of design that the full design was a, a a football thing with the you know goal posts and with the players <laughs> in, you know in, uh, on the top of it so in brazil you know when when your wife is 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 pregnant or you know and you know that a kid is going to come and so in that way a boy or girl whatever uh, now is of course for girls now now football is become more popular for girls but yes. see, in brazil when you get to know that a boy is coming you already is going you already going to buy something for your kid that is like related to football football mm. yeah yes he related to football or you know for him to dress up when he born he already will be dress up with that some with whatever with a you know whatever a, a clothes that is you know representing your club or, or something that way or representing football so yes uh, this is the way like you know when the kid is in still in inside of the womb of your wife uh you already there dreaming say yeah he's going to be a football player you know something that way he's going to support for this club i don't know that <laughs> that passion is already contaminating already the kid in the womb of uh, you know uh, of you know uh, that is already inside of your wife in the womb of your mm-hmm. wife so we are very contamin- we are contaminated with this I think with football, football fever. Exactly, and the kids. You see, what the kids are seeing in, in UK is is been that those kids, like from very small, they are watching already in football with their father. They are they starting sharing the same passion because the father is starting taking him to a ground to see games of Premier League. I think something really crazy, you know, fantastic. You can take your uh, your, your kid of two years or three years old to see a football over there. So in that way, that kid will start. You know, I think the kids already contaminated. So the kids starting playing when they are three, four, five. They already starting playing soccer. They starting playing football. Yes. But it's not yes. anymore because the father is telling the kid to go and play. No, now the kid won't go and play. You yes, is the yes. Not, yeah, the kid already has that passion inside of them, and and and. And what you are saying, I say, yeah, the level is good. 
the level has to be good in those places. As I was saying in Brazil, the level has to be good. You have to be good. So in that way, the kids, they start seeing all other kids and they say, wow, that kid's that good. And they start to be serving other kids. Say, that, that kid's really good. So in that way, the kids start looking for, yeah, I started looking for myself. And I say, yeah, I must practice it more. You know, I must do more kind of training. I must do more juggling. I must do more dribble. If I want to be better than those kids. So, yes. you know, so that uh, challenge already is there from small. So it means you're already finding challenge from very small, from grassroots level. Even you are already starting finding challenge for yourself. And I think that is the difference. Yeah, I mean, I to be honest, uh, another thing which I feel, Berito, mm. you can put light on that, is that um, see, we don't have enough uh, football stars or heroes in our country right exactly, now exactly. Uh, to, yeah, yeah. so that the boys can follow. Like yeah, uh, yeah. A, a kid which is born in Brazil can actually, you know, look up to like Roberto Carlos and you know, all the big names. We're having, are, we're having, thousands, they, they we're having thousands of heroes. We're having thousands of heroes there. We, yes, absolutely. There are thousands. I, I, I started seeing people in amateur league. Why, uh, you yeah. see, when I was playing amateur league on Saturday, Sundays, I had my heroes over there already. I had my heroes in my ta in my area where I usually to see some old amateur leagues over there. And I say, wow, I, I love the way that guy is playing. You know, I, wow, I really, I'm really crazy. That guy is playing really too much. So you're having a lot of heroes, you know, the heroes that you watch in TV, the heroes that you can see, uh, you know, uh, you can see maybe a training of Grêmio where you can see your, your TV hero. I like, you can see him, I like, just in a training session. So there's a lot of pumping, you know, and, and yes. in, in that thing. And I think that is very important. Is what what I think we are missing over here. As you are saying, uh, we are missing heroes. We are missing. Yes. Yeah, I I could relate to it because when I started playing cricket, um, when I started absolutely, uh, you know, there was no hero in cricket for us, and suddenly we had somebody like Sword of Ganguly, you know, who who played for the country, became the India captain, and. He was there in the captain for five years and suddenly, you know, uh, there were a lot of cricketers, uh, young kids wanted to play, wanted to play cricket because uh, they actually had somebody in front of them as a hero, exactly. like sort of Ganguly. Exactly. And exactly. Uh, they would want to follow him. And when I started playing cricket, I never had anybody like him. Okay, obviously I started playing with him and I, he was mm. one of my absolute legends in front of me, but, mm. but I never had anybody. So I feel that, you know, uh, to have heroes is very important. Like you want to become like him or you want to adore or exactly. play like him. I think that exactly. is where India... So do you think that um, somebody uh, you know, from from outside, like a superstar, you know, from Brazil, from Argentina or from England, uh, India, India should think of getting somebody like them coming and uh, coaching or playing or, you know, I mean... What can we do as a nation to, to, to play World Cup? Oh, you must set a goal. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's very important. And, and, and so far, there is no clear goal. I think, as, as we are talking about, is uh, maybe having the first Indian play maybe for in the Champions League or yeah, play at uh, whatever, at Barcelona in La Liga. I think mm -hmm. we must let him go. I think that is, I think, is uh, we, it's not been that clear, I think, for everyone. I know. Although uh, it should be a, like a, uh, this goal should be a goal of, of uh, India. It should not be a goal of a state, whatever, maybe a Bengal state or Mahara state. It should be a, what is our goal? India, is, what, what guys, what our goal? Our goal, okay, is to put one. Uh, to make one Indian player to play uh, to, to one day play for for a Premier League or a league or whatever, then say okay that is our goal. So now let's start in working together. So everyone is starting working together with that goal. But 
I think no everyone is working, you know, together to, to, to you know, uh, I think they haven't set in that goal fast. <laughs> um, and everyone there yeah, say, yes, uh, let's make in a, a player for India. Uh, but I don't think that is what we need. We need to make in, I, I think with the population of the heavy in India, I think it would be better if we, we set a goal that say, yeah, we must get one player only to play uh, Premier League or La Liga. And that should be our goal. And let's work hard for that. Um, I yeah. think that should, yeah, that could be one, one of the things to do. Uh, then to try to make him you know, like, uh, uh, um, try to make him maybe uh, players for India. That you know, it's a kind of, you know, you must look, you must setting goals quite far. Although maybe you're not reaching there, but you say, yeah, that is our goal over there. It's quite far, but we are. You know, we know it's a long one, so we have to work hard for it. Then you make yes. setting some goal that is very close by, that is, uh, is realistic. You know, it's realistic maybe to, to, to make him players to play in India. Yeah, you are going to make him players to play in India, but yeah, but what about maybe make a player to play to play in Premier League and La Liga? That is, I think is, is we, we should look for that challenge, I think. Yes, you know what, to be honest, uh, what... Another thing which I felt uh, is that, you know, if, you, if, you, if, if I'm talking about, say, England, uh, you know, I used to live in a place very close to Bristol. And mm. there used to be two clubs, Bristol Rovers and Bristol City. Uh, they would not play in the Premier Division. But people in Bristol, they would support that particular club, which plays in Second Division. And I could see the passion of them uh, taking their kids. I have actually seen, uh, you know, women uh, going there alone. I've seen women going there with their own kids. No, 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 no husband or no boyfriend. Uh, a woman with his with her kid, you know, entering a football uh, game and uh, and passionately supporting that particular club because that particular club belongs to Bristol. So, and none of the Bristol guys would actually support Manchester United or Manchester City. They would support the local club, which I feel that is still not there in India. If I live in Kaligad, I don't support Kaligad club. Or Bhavanipur, I live in Bhavanipur, I don't support the Bhavanipur club. I actually mm. support East Bengal or I support Mohan Bagan. So, so I feel that in that way also, uh, that passion needs to be there. That I support my local club, I support my local boys and I w go and watch football, the local leagues. And I take my kids along with me to watch those, uh, you know, that kind of football and and, and insist or encourage my kid to go and play football because you know I find you know a lot of all of my friends they have their kids they know everything about La Liga they they know every player they know everything about English Premier League which transfer fees who's going to come who's going to be the coach they know everything but they don't want to play themselves I think that is the difference uh, I feel which which we are lacking eh, to be honest that. The boys, they don't want to go out and play in the field. They're happy to play football on PlayStation, but they're absolutely aware what's happening everywhere in the world, but not physically going and playing and, you know, taking part in that sport. Do you think that's also there? I think maybe because of the initiative of, uh, maybe can be because of the initiative of the clubs, the local clubs. Um, see, as you are saying in England, and... Um, in England, what they are doing is within. Uh, so, if I'm from Chelsea and I want to get a player from different part of Chelsea, I cannot get in in England. You only can get in players within two thousand kilometers surround your area. Yeah, I think probably you know that. So, within two thousand um, yes. kilometers, with your thing, you can get you can get in a, a player at the youth level or grassroots level. Yeah. You cannot yeah. get a player if you cross those, you know, two kilometers, and you cannot get a player from there. So I think that's an interesting thing, you know, in 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 England, and they build up a, a kind of a community, kind of of a thing, and you know, I think that is very interesting what what they are doing because they're creating their own, you know, their own crowd, their own people. And what's happening yes. in England, well, there's a lot of uh, community service what the clubs are offering for community. Yeah, so yeah. They are standing their coats for the schools. 
you know, um, they're sending their course maybe for kind of a workshop for for the PE teachers. Uh, they're sending their course also giving even a kind of a classes for, you know, for their, yes. for, uh, for the kids to football, a kind of uh, football uh, for the kids. And I had been in England the last time also. We went to one of the clubs over there. There's a lot of like uh, working what they're doing for disabled people, blind people. So the club, they're offering their facilities like to, you know, to give service for the community, for the people. So in that way, what the people, is, you are giving a lot for community. So what the community is doing? They are supporting you. They say, yeah, yes. what else is doing for us? What Manchester is doing for us? They're doing nothing but Leicester, they are helping our community, you know. So in that way, they, they build up in that. So it's about giving, you know. It's, it's all about giving. Okay, we are giving things, then they get it back. Yeah, because the club is taking care of their kids. So in that way, the community says, yes, this club is looking after my kids. Yeah, so in that way, I'm... I'm going to get to give him my appreciation, the way to give him my appreciation and my love. If I have to give for someone, of course, I'm going to give for someone that's taking care of my kids. And it's what they are doing really well. And do it together, of course, because the initiative of, you know, uh, to get in players only start out your two, you know, like your uh, two kilometers. Only it's an initiative from the federation also that is fantastic also. So in that way, the big clubs they don't get in your, you know, they are not getting your players, the best players from your locality. So the best yes. players from your locality, you are the one that's going to get in that. So I think in that way, there's a lot of things happening. You know, even although you are in small towns, as I'm, I was saying, I came from a small town, and there's a lot of. In India, there's a lot of uh, villages and small towns and all that. I think it could have a lot, a, like a lot of initiatives in that way. I think everyone could be having a club to play football, whatever. You know, we're talking about football today, but they could have at least a sport to do or something to do. I think that could be a very interesting. So in that way, when you're talking about Barashat, you know, if you Barashat is really doing something in that way, for the kids, for the community, or something that way. If there's a club, before, maybe if he, a club was there, then maybe the people say, yeah, the Barashat club is, is doing something for my kids. So, mm -hmm. maybe, yeah, uh, it's the thing to think about, about, you know, to build something, maybe even not for my kid, because tomorrow my kid will be adult, but maybe for my grandchildren already. So, if you support this club now, he'll be here for you know, for forever or for long and all that. And all my um, grandsons and all the things can be part of this, this, this thing. Yes. Yeah, that's a great idea because, you know, a couple of years back, I actually met David James, the, the famous mm. you know, good, you know, English goalkeeper, World Cupper. And I met him in Mumbai and I was, uh, I was having breakfast with him. And, uh, you know, he also said that... Uh, People like him and David Seaman, Gary Lineker, they've been asked to go and do these workshops. And, uh, you know, and obviously they say that in, in small clubs, uh, being also supported by the local businessmen, the local shops, uh, they also mm -hmm. sponsor that particular club mm -hmm. and help them to do these workshops and, you know, to interact uh, um, with the kids and allow the kids to get into the club and play in that particular ground. So, yeah, they, there are... Uh, it's, it's a give and take policy. You do something for the society, the society will give back with their support. And I think that's a fantastic point which, which you have raised here. But enough of uh, international and uh, enough of uh, this, this um, you know, World Cup football. We know you as Shobhus Tota. You know that. Everybody calls you. So how did this all, all of this happen? That from Brazil, you travel all the way to Kolkata to play for Mohan Bagan. How did this happen? I mean, the contact and who approached? How, why did you agree? And what was your first reaction when you reached Kolkata? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it was in 1999 when I, I yes. uh, came to India. Uh, during that time, I was really looking for the opportunity to move in out abroad, you know, moving out from Brazil. Uh, and I, I, it was a year when uh, it was, a, you know, uh, when my, my agent came with the proposal for me to come into India. It was the first one that came to me. And of course, uh, you know, um, and it's something that was in my prayer, you know, that say, yeah, say, yeah, when you pray, you say, yeah, God, and I, I just want, you don't choose where you want to go. You just say, yeah, God, I just want uh, moving out. I just want opportunity out of uh, Brazil. So then India came, you know, to me, then that's not a moment when you can say, yeah, God, but, you know, I was not looking for India. I was looking maybe for another place or something that way because I, I just, but so I just feel like it was a kind of a one sort of a prayer, frankly speaking, you know, because I, I had a desire to, to move out once again because I was in Japan uh, just uh, two years before. Uh, and then I went back to Brazil and had some of uh, uh, quite a tough experiences over there. And I just feel that, yes, uh, I think it's enough for me over here and uh, time for me to go out. So when the proposal came yes. for me to India, then I was in the process of prayer and I was praying to God that say, God, you know, I'm, I'm ready to move out again. And when India come, I could not say no because I was praying to 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 moving out of Brazil. And then I say yes, I'm ready to go. And then when I came over here and and quite challenge for me because I, I came to India without speaking English. I didn't know a single language of uh, English. And and of course, then later on, other challenges starting to come. As, uh, the, the food means, it's not a, about the food, but about the chili and all those things, where I'm not using to. But uh, yeah, then I came to Mohumbagan. I always used to say I was quite lucky because I could come to any club in India. But um, really, God was preparing something special for me that is, is just learning to a uh, uh, like in the state where you know where there is a giant of uh, a national club of India, and God say, yeah, I'm going to put you in 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 the national club of India. Uh, I'll be going to put you in Mohumbagan. Then, <laughs> um, yeah, that that's it. That then I I decide to come, and when I come, I join into the club, uh, and it was. It was not that easy as I thought. As, as I come, of course, I see football and be different than Brazil. And, and I thought, as I, when I saw, I just see, um, um, I think I can adapt to that. I can adjust to that. It will not be a problem. In the ground, I don't think, I, I didn't see any problem with that. And that was my experience in the beginning. As I come to Bagan and and I think the club is welcome me uh, very well. I think my start in my beginning was really great. I had really uh, a part of a good team. Of course, you know, it's helped me out. But uh, the players as Debichit and uh, Basdev Mandol uh, had art singing. Yeah. Uh, had, uh, there's a lot of players in Kapoor, and there's a lot of players. These players they really they embrace me, you know. These players they really like. Uh, they take care of me. They, ah, they really show you like that really love for me in the beginning. <coughs> like like these these guys really making things easy for me, you know. Okay, so um, you got to be very, absolutely honest when you answer this question that um, you come from a country where football is everything and uh, it's other side of the world. So when 
this contract came or this this opportunity came to you that there is a club and that is in india you've been to asia you've been to japan as you have said and japan also plays world cup the standard is high the club standard is high in japan i'm sure so what was the expectations uh, that you had you had no idea about india and indian football i'm sure you probably you didn't even know that india plays football and there are professional clubs to be honest so coming all the way from brazil to india what were the expectations what what was there what did you imagine you got to be absolutely honest um see uh, you see what is yeah it's a different thing is um you know what i had been through and uh before coming to india and coming to india of course it's a different scenario yes yeah the same scenario what what i i had been through uh but as i said it it's something that is i don't know i just feel it was a call frankly speaking i just feel it was a call for me and and where i had asked for you know and and so when i came to india when i see things i see things in different way i'm i'm i didn't see things the um i didn't look in much into what i had where i had been and where i am today you know and i just looking for i just look for what, what i can be you know what i can do not what i can be they be all about what i can do you know uh, and i just feel that i had to keep everything back you know what i uh, from where i had come from where i had been before i come to india and all those things i just move i just really left all those things over there you know since when i reached in india although i seen a different reality but all that those old things what i had with me i really frankly speaking i really forgot all those things and now i come to a situation where i had to where i come to a situation when i say i had to talk with myself and say yeah what you can do in this situation and that was my point in that time you know and and i i i sit down i think my first training in, the, in my first uh, days in the club I like my first uh, contact I had with the club I was in the gallery and all that and and I just say yeah you come from very far away from Brazil yeah to India now you are here now you have to forget you know you forget even I like your trip from there to here now you are here now you have to you know you have to 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 thinking what you are going to do and how you are going to do now now you have to think about the kind of solutions <laughs> and and this is the way i thought you know and uh, football is football anywhere you know yes. yeah now maybe maybe we are talking about levels yeah but uh when you talk about levels you have to prove yourself even So when I come to the gallery I see yeah this is not the level as Brazil but mm-hmm. but I had to prove in myself that yes I'm better than this level you know you have to prove it until that moment in the gallery I didn't prove anything that I I really I come from I came from Brazil and I was good enough to play in India so I just come to that point and I really I didn't see uh, I didn't look much for the uh frankly speaking for the level or you know I didn't look much for the scenario I just look already for say yeah now we have to start and think what we're going to do and how we're going to do it and and that was wow. my the way I see things yeah this is the way I, I I just saw the things in that time Well, oh, you are an absolute um, legend, and you have done so well uh, as a footballer in India. And I honestly feel there are two overseas footballers we had um, who who has become more Indian than their own, uh, you know, countrymen. 
uh, before you was uh, Chima Okeri. Uh, he spent a lot of time in Kolkata and he's kind of become an Indian. And and I think when I when I look look at you and when I see you when I speak to you, uh, I find you more Indian than Brazilian. To be honest, the way you have adapted adapted in India. So there's another question which I would want to ask you, uh, Benito, is that you were just saying that when you reached here. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all about, you know, how I can add it to it, you know. I, I, yeah. I, I always believe into it, you know. So, how yeah, how I can add it to something. And I think yeah. that was my thinking. So, yeah, how I can add it to this football, you know. How yes. I can you know, add it something to it. How I can make it better, you know. How I can improve it. So, I think that was my, you know, my way of thinking that time. You know, how I can cooperate with oh, that, how I can make people better, how I can make the team better. So I just thought in that way. Absolutely. So you said, you just said that when you started your first day in the training, you know, with Mon Bagan and when you started playing for Mon Bagan in, in, in the, you know, all the Kolkata League and the National League, what was the difference? You said there was a difference. What was the difference which you, which you found when you, when you were here for the first time, you obviously adapted, but what was that basic difference which you thought was, you know, there? See, uh, from the start, for me, was uh, a big challenge. Um, you can say technically also, you can say, because there are a lot of football fans who will be watching us. They would know if you can, you can actually say technically as well. No, for me, it was uh, really a challenge because... Uh, uh, when I came, I was out of form, you know, because I, I came from the uh, off-season in Brazil. So when I came here, um, uh, the weather, it was uh, yeah. quite tough during that time. The weather was uh, really tough. Then uh, I had challenge with food because uh, yeah. the thing for me was a big challenge for me to adjust with the spices and the chili and all that because in south of Brazil we're not using to it. Uh, mm -hmm. And for me a long trial because I didn't know that I had to come uh, that I was coming to India for a trial. All right. So, yeah for me it was a kind of a 10 days day, 10 days trial in Mohumbaga ground. Okay. So for me it was a really a very I like it was a very long way, you know. Uh, Who was the coach then? Uh, Who was the coach when you came? But I'll be telling the story of that. I got to know later yeah, on please. what's happened. Please, please. What? Yeah, what's happened? Mohumbag when during the time when I came to here, Mohumbagan they had another player in their plans. That was a Nigerian. He was an African player. Where Mohumbagan was. Oh, yeah. Looking to sign that player too. So okay. means training, I was doing everything, but Mohumbagan, they had that player in mind to sign that player in mind. So what's happened? That player, they uh, he kept uh, delaying them. That player, he just uh, like keeping delaying them, keeping delaying them, and all those things. So in that way, also they keep delaying my signing. Because they're okay. waiting, yeah, they're waiting to see that guy to say no, yes, then to sign me. I got it. You understand? So I got yes, to know I do, I do. When, when I'm talking with Debashish and all that, he's, he's always using to laugh on that. And, and I used to play with him and say, wow, that trial was uh, the longest one. I, like, I have been to trial, but that one was really crazy. It was 10 days. And then he started to say, yeah, you know why? Because we, we keep you for so long in that trial. It was because they, they had someone in mind. So it means I was training, I was giving my 100%, I was doing everything in the training. And they say, okay, tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay, give a little bit more time. Yeah, he's, you know, he's still not fit because my, my agent was here with me. And of course, I didn't know how... I didn't speak English in that time. So they come to my agent and say, no, no, he's telling him to, to wait one more day. He's not speaking yet. He needs to get in better and all the things. 
So in that way, they kept they kept me ten days on trial. Mohun Bagan. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So and, and I'm happy. <laughs> and I'm happy to be honest that uh, as a football fan and as as a Mumbai mm. fan, a supporter, I would say that I'm happy that that particular football footballer mm. delayed, uh, and we could get you in Kolkata Moyes, and we we could get you uh, the the absolute legend in in the football field. And I'm thankful that that mm -hmm. particular footballer delayed, and you got the opportunity and mesmerized yeah. all of us with your football skill. You know, I always they be using to say to people that yeah, I say yeah, I am a miracle. You know, and and so what I had said to you about my prayers and everything, uh, and I say yeah, um, I, I I I I was praying to moving out of India and and then God choose India for me, and then yeah. I say no, now I don't want to go. You know, and this is. I just feel that it was really like a, a God's call for me, frankly speaking, you know, for me to come into India. Really, God had real purpose on that, and I just like trust in Him. I just trust God. I just say, yeah, you, you choose India. I'm going to India, and when I come to the gallery, I say, yeah, now I, I must uh, find out, you know, how I'm going to to make it better, how I'm going to improve it, how I'm going to do it. You know uh, uh, things in that way. So when God, God, I like makes a call, no one can stop it. You know, and, and although I like the officials of Mohumbagan, they they try to sign another player, and but uh, it was for me. You know, it was not for another player. And until today, also there is one thing from which Bengal I would like to share. Uh, yes, be something when I'm meeting the people from which Bengal. They always they usually to say that Barreto during your trials in Mohumbagan, and we try to to get you from the hotel and bring you to our club to sign you, <laughs> and because Mohumbagan they keep in delaying that long, and of course um, probably the things from from uh, media or something that way. I had spread it to Ish Bengal that yeah the player is, is really good he's a good player so I don't know why Mohamed Gan is delaying that much but the, the player is good so what's happened during that time which Bengal features they try to how we call uh, um, uh, they went to the hotel to to get me to, to for me to sign for Ish Bengal but they didn't find in the hotel okay. And it, yeah, this is something that. Uh, uh, Did they go to the, the right hotel? They Did went they go to, the, to the right hotel. hotel. They went to the wrong <laughs> hotel. They went to the wrong hotel and they didn't find me over there. Uh, they, they separated uh, <laughs> you because during that trials we went for you. We went to the hotel, but we went to the wrong hotel and we didn't find you. Otherwise, you, we had signed you for which Bengal. We really miss you in that time. But but that used to happen a lot in, in Kolkata that you know the player would get out to sign for Mohan Bagan and East Bengal would take him. So the player would get out to sign for East Bengal. The so Mohan Bagan would probably hijack him and uh, make make them sign for their club. And I think that is the passion and that is that is the culture we used to have and uh, that is the respect we used to have for players, you know, uh, for footballers. And I have grown up listening to these stories and I didn't know that actually happened with you. It's happy with me also. So, so, so when you eventually when you signed for the club and when you started playing for the club and you started scoring, you know, you you were in the, at your peak, and um, so the love you got, and obviously the Mohan Bagan supporters they call, used to call you Shobhu Tota, and you, I mean they used to love you, but there was a massive respect from the other side from East Bengal. The, the supporters respected you uh, as a footballer. You know, they, they had all that honor for you. So, I have to ask you that when you played your first derby, you never experienced a derby before East Bengal playing Mohan Bagan. What exactly used to happen one day before the derby in the practice sessions or in the training sessions or in the team meeting? 
what was the vibe how was it like see there it, it was thank god it was not my first derby you know because i play a derby in brazil also uh, yeah but you had no uh, idea about yeah, the kolkata yeah. derby yeah but the derby of course in kolkata is something different um the good thing of my first there uh, my first derby there is because i didn't speak english that one of the best things <laughs> okay. so in that way the people they just speak with me i say yeah i just I like shaking my head or something that way I say oh, okay 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 so for me it was all about football you know and it is the different when you know you have it to interact with media you know is a different when you understand what supports are telling you i talk with you so of course uh, i think the the derby started to become more heavier for me with the time yeah because then i started to understand like much more about the derby i started to understand the supporters and i had to interact with the media you know i had to interact with the media so in that way it's i feel it's weird it's rising a little bit more pressure on you you know it is is uh, there is more things for you to think in about you know what what to answer to the media you know uh, what to say to the supporters to listen to stop in there with the supporters for 5 minutes 10 minutes <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, talk with them spending 30 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes with the media talk with them about that so it's so in that way there's a lot of thing uh, you are receiving you know in that way but in the beginning no it's it's what for me was more about uh, visual things things what i'm seeing and and of course i know the the weight of a derby and and so for me it it was all about playing football and i was quite uh, i was lucky enough also because I played only one derby in my first year. Okay. Yeah, because when I came, we started uh, playing away games. So I, I, we went to Bangalore, we went to Goa, we played four games. So when I, we come back and we are really, we are really very strong because I remember when I came to Bagan, we are in fifth position. So when we come back from 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 Goa. because we had in that time we had at least four games in goa we had one game in bangalore so when we come back from goa we come back already in first position in that way okay so i was quite lucky like because when i played the derby uh we had a good team the team was already you know with that fluidity the team was we already know each other we already in a good moment we already in the past, we already in past position uh, and a part of me we had Igor was was there uh, we had Steven by the way was there so the team we had a very good understanding already between ourselves between the team so in that way for us i think it was uh, quite easy you know to okay. to you know with my first derby in the, in the first year i didn't have to go for a oh. generally four five derbies you know using to play yeah. you play a league you play official do you play uh, two games of uh, uh, that time two games of uh, i league national league then maybe Absolutely. you play rover cup derby is there maybe you play uh, durand cup there is a times where we yes. play a couple of seven seven eight derbies in a year in, in a year <laughs> really crazy absolutely and uh, people would say we don't mind yeah. and the supporters would say we don't mind winning the national league but make sure that you win against east bengal and uh, yeah. that's that's how it that's how, that's how uh, it is in in west bengal and uh, it, that big here so so you said that when you came to uh, kolkata and you you couldn't speak um, the english language and i'm sure a lot of your uh, teammates would not speak english either so so how would you communicate or probably a game plan when the when the coach is uh, you know giving you some ideas and strategies how would he communicate with you without you know with this uh, language barrier i feel the football intelligence here in my team was really high frankly speaking yeah, yeah i 
as I'm saying, I, I was quite lucky because I just come to the right place in the right time. In uh, you know, maybe I was the right guy, but I come to the right place in the right time. And right. and I think the football intelligence was was quite uh, high in our team because we had the Vichit that you know <laughs> he was a uh, uh, one of the best defenders. Uh, best top was what I had played. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I had uh, Basdeb Mandol, one of the best uh, also Bengal players I have seen in my life. Uh, and we had Arp Singh, uh, midfielder that was anywhere also. Very, very sensible guy also. Uh, and then uh, ah, we got a lot of players uh, like that was that's the thing of Bagan. We, we, you are getting a lot of good players this side of you. Yes. So the level of intelligence is really high. So in that way, it's become really easy. Like, of course, football is one language. We, but we all are like uh, we we we're calling. We, there's two ways of communication. One is is a verbal. One is no verbal communication. That's an overball communication. It's about movement. You know, it's about yes. movement. Yeah, show yourself, show your body, you know, make a signal with your hand or something like that way. So we are really strong on that because the intelligence, the intelligence level was too high. So frankly speaking, we didn't use in much verbal communication. You know, I didn't have to shout or something or they shouting to me and all that. It's all about signals, you know, movements. You know, and showing off, you know, supporting in that way. So in that way, I think it really was easy for for me, frankly speaking. You know, I think it was easy for everyone, but it was really easy because the level of intelligence was really high. So in the second year, when when you started speaking the language and understood that this is what it is, so you feel you felt the pressure playing East Bengal. Was it a different kind of a pressure? Yeah, it's the I see. Uh, um, as I was saying, it's you know you starting playing so many games, you know, and uh, in my second year, as I had said, you starting playing so many derbies, you know, and and uh, of course when you starting playing so many derbies, it's of course. Uh, um, you start in winning, but you start in losing also. So you start in getting the test of it, of winning yeah. or losing. Yeah, as I think you start in getting the test of it. Of course, the pressure starts rising because you know how it's heavy, how it's difficult to lose a derby. You know the week. You know what you're going to face in tomorrow. You know what you're going to face in the coming in the coming week. You know it's, it will be a kind of it will be an abandon, like no one yeah. is. You know, no support will come, no media will come because everyone will be going to another side. I like no support, but all the media is going to another side. So you feel yes. really like, wow, man, it, you know. But yeah, that is, I think, the, the you know, the the outcome of a derby because I think derby is 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 the same anywhere in the world. Yeah. If you yeah. win, you are heroes. If you lose it, yeah, you know, you are villains. So in the yes. second year, of course, it you know with the number of derbies and win and lose, of course, the pressure starting you starting get a little bit more pressure, you know, into that and and of course as a foreigner also is always that you know the, the responsibility is always there is uh, uh, is more in your shoulders than a, a local player. So yes. in that way. Uh, you start putting more pressure in yourself, I feel, you know, uh, with the time. Because, you know, uh, you know, the expectation on you also is starting getting higher, 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 higher. So in that way, yeah, you say, yeah, I must, you know, uh, it's about your mental preparation must be, you know, also getting better and better. Maybe in the beginning, you are like, Maybe in the second year you don't don't need maybe that much of preparation. All that it was more about, yeah, it's okay. But with the time you, frankly speaking, you started like getting more time for yourself, 
maybe during the week you're starting preparing better yourself. You starting maybe say um you see the players are not in that same tone, then you say uh, maybe I must do something during this week to making the players to be in the right way because the game will be difficult. You starting looking for another side also. You starting looking for which Bengal. See, yeah, which Bengal they're very strong this time. They're having good foreigners. They're having good players. Maybe they're better than us. So there's a lot of factors what you starting looking for, and 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 definitely it's I think with the time the pressure is getting higher. So um, so there's a couple of things which I have to ask you again. Um, what do you think of the supporters? What's what's your take take on them? Do you, I mean you got the you know probably the most uh, you were the most loved footballer uh, in your time, and um, I have seen the the Mohan Bagan supporters going crazy uh, for you. So what what is your impression? And how do you how do you think? I'm I'm a supporter, you know, and um, and this is the way I'm seeing myself. Um, I'm just a supporter inside of the ground, you know, and, and okay. I just it's it's been a kind of uh, you know during that moment inside of the ground I'm a supporter, and it's a kind of exchanging thing, you know, it's a kind of yeah, uh, I'm I'm a supporter over here. I'm feeling for them. Yeah, I'm feeling for the supporters. I I I understand what they're feeling now, and yeah. and I let the supporters also to play as Barreto. <laughs> <You know, laughs> kind of, I think a Nike advertisement or something that way. There is a, a kid is is a kind of you know he, imaginating himself as a Ronaldo or something that way. Is a fun of Ronaldo, imaginate as a Ronaldo, Ronaldo become the kid, something that way. So I just feel like I'm I'm a I'm a supporter inside of the pitch, frankly speaking. Yeah. No, I think the yeah. emotions what the supporters are carrying with them. I think as you understanding that, and you're really a supporter inside of the pitch. You know, we, when you understand they're like, yeah, when well, supporter he must uh, uh, he must travel uh, three hours, four hours to come into the pitch. You know, you start still as a player, you start understanding that. No, every player understanding that, but I had also I had that feeling. And say, wow, this guy is coming from very far to see Mohumbagan. Wow, this guy he took a train to come in from there to here. Wow, this guy he has to wait in a long queues to come inside of the pitch. Yes, yes. You know, you starting having that. You know, that communication, frankly speaking, that is a kind of a communication. And the communication was there. I, I always was very sensible to for that point. I really understand is I I think you are supporting for a club and I'm 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 supporting also for a club. And we know what we are passing through when we are supporting for a club. Huh? And and sometimes you, when you put expectation into a player. Uh, and when I'm watching Premier League and I have in my club also and I have some players, I really put expectation in those players, you know. Okay. And and when that player is corresponding to my expectation, I really like, wow, you know, I really say, wow, man, you know, I really, I really enjoy, you know. Even sometimes I like it's not about a, a club, even about a club, maybe sometimes it's about the player. Sometimes your club is losing. But if your expectation that player has been fulfilled during that time, you really feel, man, although we lose today, but I'm really happy that, yeah, mm -hmm. I performed today. You know, he had performed so, although the club lost today, Mohumbaga lost, but Barreto, he performed today and I came maybe to see him. I come to see the club, of course. I came because of the club, but I came to see Barreto and Barreto, he performed, my, he fulfilled my expectation. And, and and that was important for me, you know, that was really oh, important. Oh. Yeah. To, oh, that's amazing. To, yeah. <clears throat> so, but, um, so now after supporters, there, there is there is somebody I have to ask you. You mm -hmm. have played with him, you have played against him. 
So with him and against him, Bai Chung Bhutia. If you could, uh, you know, put some light on that because uh, you have obviously Bai Bai Chung and you have played for Mohun Bagan together and you have faced each other in a derby. So if you can say a little bit about him, Bai. Uh... I'm not putting Bai as a as an Indian player. For me, Bai was like in the level of a foreigner, you know. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. So, um, and I always used to to tell it to everyone uh, that uh, Bai was one of the best uh, strikers I had played with, you know. And he was a really sensible guy. I think we we played together a couple of years in Mohumbagan and. I always really enjoy to play with Bai because with Bai Chun I could uh, I, I I could really uh, challenge myself in, in different way because when I play in Bagan um, I think most of the times I was the the main player the I was the, the number nine target player you know but when uh, Bai used to come. Frankly speaking, I had that uh, trust on him that even I was able to move him from there, from that part of a uh, box or something that way, maybe to uh, maybe to bring in different of ways for us maybe to score, you know, to, okay. to uh, <clears throat> find ways for us to. Then I come to that point, little bit more point of creativity, you know. So I feel when I was playing as a target player, I was there more for scoring goals. Then you ask yeah. me, Barreto, yes. So you didn't like to scoring goals? I say, yeah, I like to scoring goals, but I was moving a little bit out of my game. That was that creative part. That was moving a little bit out of the box, a little bit moving to the side, coming to a little bit to the center. I like it, and and with by. I was able to to be myself, frankly speaking. I was really able wow. to be myself. That's, my, a, that's yeah. a massive compliment. Yeah, uh. yeah because by is really using a like to compliment in myself as a player, and in that way, if we, both of us we complement in ourselves, of course the team will be going to gain with that because the communication between ourselves will be really good, and we of course the the, the team is going to gain with that because. Bai was a terrific uh, is, is scorer, you know. He was wow in in okay. seconds. Are like yeah, he was away from from defenders and he, he already was pushing the ball inside of the, the 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 goal. So he was very very sensible guy. I like he, I could look into him. That is, is something what I, I admire on Bai in Bai Chun when I play with him because. He was able to understand me, my mind. He was able to understand my level of intelligence and, and you know thinking and all that. So we didn't have to look each other. So when I was getting the ball, I already knew, and he, I already knew my team was going to run in, in that position out of uh, opponent, and he already knew that I was going to give him that ball for him in that place. Wow. Wow, that's amazing! And that 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 that's you and Bai Chu playing together, and in in and like supporters like us, we used to call that bad duty. That to play with me. I love Barreto Bai Chu together. I love I love to play with Bai Chu. Really. But, but how was he? With but how was he when you are playing against each other? Uh, we played. Uh, Against each other, we play. I think just one year or two years. I think we play against yeah. each other. I don't know. There, uh, by tune is always a derby guy, you know, and he's yes. really a derby guy. I think most of the derbies. That's that's why I'm saying I always admire him. Why I admire by tune because in the derby, no every foreigner can perform in a derby. You know, it's really a difficult game. But by tune, man. In in those derby, he always was there to score in goals. So he was really a derby guy. So in my derbies, I already knew. Say okay, oh, my tune is there. It will not be only like you know 
everything, you know, everything will be in my back. By tune is there also. So in that way, we could share in that pressure and that responsibility to, of course, to win the game, to make it, our team better and to win the game. So by tune was really good on derbies. So of course, in, in derbies always to play, it's difficult to play against him because uh, uh, he was a derby guy. But fortunately, I like when he played for Bengal, when we play against uh, uh, Mohumbagan Ush Bengal, when he was Ush Bengal, he was not that, you know, uh, you know, killer. He was not I like in, in that uh, really mood to scoring mm-hmm. goals. And uh, so, uh, but of course, Bai is always a guy that really always respect him. I really always respect him. That's an amazing thing uh, which, which came out from you, uh, Benito. But uh, there's uh, another uh, little thing which, which I need to ask you that uh, now, um, when you have spoken a lot about Bai Chung and yourself, whom do you think at that point of time, as, as your teammates or even for players playing for East Bengal were really good. Whom you thought that these boys were really, really good? You you mentioned Bashudev Mondol and Devjit and all, but there yeah. much others. Uh, Sunil Chetri, you must have seen him. Yeah, he was young Sunil, when you played. Yeah, that young that time. Uh, yes. When yeah, and I think I had to rejoin Mohumbagan when Sunil came. Yes. Um, he was that young that time, and uh, it's really tough for him. I think he didn't get much uh, chance. I think Mohamedan is a really difficult club for young young players, uh, you know, because uh, they always have very strong teams. You know, they already having experienced players, very strong team players are really, you know, uh, they already have a name already. So it's a very difficult for young youngsters to 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 start in up in Mohammedan Ush Bengal. It's very tough, very difficult for them. Yeah. So yeah. maybe they only get the chance to play a couple of games of uh, Kolkata League, and a part of it they don't get the chance to play anymore. You know. And, but there's a players like Lalan Kuya, uh, yeah. a guy from Mizoran. He was. Wow, I think he was one of uh, the most talented players what I played with. But unfortunately, he he lost a little bit, uh, you know, uh, he lost a little bit focus, you know, and, and he was not able to to continue in, into that level. But he, I think he was one of the most talented players I've seen passing to, like young players passing to Mohumagan during that time. And of course, Sunil also, Sunil... Yeah, is 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 a guy that don't have you talking about him. But I think yeah, Alan Pui, I think it was one of the most talented ones. And of course, I think as I had said, Mohumbagan Ush Bengal, they're not a clubs to for the youngsters. It's very difficult, you know, to having really coaches and like that really putting the youngsters to play, to having that courage, frankly speaking. You know, I, I, I just feel sometimes the players even like if they having a little bit more time of playing, I feel maybe they can uh, they can be a fast eleven. But to having that courage to put in those players is not. I think every coach can have it to put in those youngsters to play in Mohumbagan Ush Bengal. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, now when you are retired uh, and you've gone back, and again you came back to India in a different role. You are in Mumbai now. You are stuck with this corona crisis. Uh, and uh, how are you dealing with this? And uh, more so, please tell us exactly what you're doing because your fans, the viewers, they, they want to know. I do know. I've spoken to you. But uh, they would want to know exactly what's happening in you in your life right now. Yes. Uh, um, so uh, the last five years, the last five years, uh, um, uh, I've been working in Bombay uh, yes. into a, a program of uh, Nita Bunny of Reliance that's called uh, Reliance Foundation Young Champs. It's a grassroots youth development program. We started up in, as I said, 2015, and I had joined as a coach in 2015. So for me, it's been a great experience to be 
working as a coach is is really something different. You know, um, yes. yeah, being a player and being a coach is is a different thing. You know, although we are speaking the same football language, uh, but to be a coach, if you want to be a good coach, is really different. And 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 football is a very complex game. You know, and 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 if you're looking to the time, it's always uh, they're keeping a day in things into that. So there's a lot of books, like you know, a lot of subjects where you have to cover, and you must know about that very well. So in that way, it's, it's really difficult because now play when you're playing, you just have to play. As I had said, I didn't have to open my mouth, you know. But now it's uh, totally different. Now you have to explain, you know. Yes. And you have to know what you are doing. So there's a lot of factors that involve it. See, guys, in one hour sessions, there is a lot of things involved into that. So where you must know very well what you are doing, how you are doing. You know, and have to know a lot about the players. You have to know a lot about physical part, technical part, you know, uh, mental part. Uh, so there's uh, many factors uh, related to age groups also. You know, one thing what you are giving to a age group player of 12, of course, you can give it. It's, it's like a school, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you having, you know, it's a very complex thing and, and it's really difficult, frankly speaking, where I really struggled a lot in the beginning. But now slowly I'm finding myself. You know, now slowly I'm really understanding. That a lot is of great things. to know. That's great to know. I'm finding myself now. And now, frankly speaking, I'm really more able to use in my qualities. And I think that's a good thing. I think, I, as I've told you before, the last time when we were talking, that uh, these boys are really blessed that uh, they've got you as uh, their coach. And I have seen you play and I've admired uh, your football skills. And I'm really happy that uh, you have come back to India and you're giving uh, it back to football, to Indian football. And uh, I really thank you, um, Bereto, that you've given some of your very precious time and I really appreciate and I thank you from the bottom of my heart and I wish to speak to you again very soon. But just uh, I pray to God that you remain the way you are. You, you have a golden heart. You are a wonderful human being and so down to earth being an absolute legend. Thank you so, so, so much uh, for coming and, you know, giving your time in this live chat show. Deb, it's, it, it's my pleasure. It's, you know... Um... I still feel that God has a pro uh, purpose for me in, in India. And, and I think I'm still with the same heart, you know, that I came to India when I sit down that, in those galleries and, and I started looking to that, to the ground and everything. I say, yeah, what I can do to, what I can do to make it better, what I can do to change things, to improve it. And I think this is the same thing what I have in my heart today, you know, a different role. As a coach, I think there is much more responsibility on, on me now than as a player. But I really still like keeping, having the same heart to address something to win the football, to see what I can make him better, what I, had, uh, I can improve, how I can, you know, uh, what I have to do to make things, you know, uh, better or, you know, make things working. So I'm still with that heart over here and yeah hopefully it's you know i can get in better and better in what i'm doing so in that way i can help in better also the kids in india you know and and also i'm keeping dreaming you know it's still not a, a goal for india either i didn't set in that goal but i'm 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 dreaming with that that one day we in india we can we are able to to produce that player it's unbelievable with 1 billion to uh, 300 million people and we're able to produce one player that can play in Premier League. It's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. Yes. So, so we all uh, pray uh, to God that we produce uh, at least one or two uh, 
you know fantastic oh, player who could represent la liga or epl and uh, we also wish to play uh, football uh, in that highest platform world cup we we pray to god that you know uh, we get the right support and facility uh, to give all that support to the young kids which you are doing right now so i wish you all the best and it, it's amazing uh, to get you. you on in the show and My i really favorite. appreciate i'll be in touch i'll be in touch My thank favorite. you so much thank you so much aur apnara please es live uh, subscribe korun apnara please uh, amader support korun aur uh, dug out prottek uh, shonibar sondhe 6:30 ta ami chole ashi uh, ek bishesh kira byaktitto ke niye ajke chilo uh, oje bereto পরের সপ্তাহে আবার আপনাদের সামনে চলে আসব শনিবার সন্ধ্যে সাড়ে ছটায় ভালো থাকবেন সুস্থ থাকবেন হাত ধোবেন কুড়ি সেকেন্ড ধরে আর মেকশিওর মাস্ক পরবেন আর নিজেকে করোনা ভাইরাসের থেকে বাঁচানোর আপ্রাণ চেষ্টা করুন তার কারণ খুব দরকার হ্যান্ড স্যানিটাইজ করা হাত ধোবা মাস্ক পরা সোশ্যাল ডিস্টেন্সিং মেনটেন করবেন বেরোতো স্টে সেফ মেট অ্যান্ড প্লিজ টেক কেয়ার অফ ইউর সেলফ ইন দিস প্যান্ডেমিক থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ গুড নাইট My pleasure. And wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Thakbin.